Hello everybody and welcome back to Cambridge Institute's video series. Today's topic of discussion is going to be about the Commonwealth of Nations, commonly known as the Commonwealth. You may have heard of this term and not really known what it means, so today we're going to look at some of the key points and try to come up with what the Commonwealth really is. The Commonwealth of Nations, formerly known as the British Commonwealth, has a long history, but one that is quite straightforward. For all common purposes, the Commonwealth is a somewhat loose association of former British colonies and current protectorates or dependent territories. The modern Commonwealth has its beginnings in the post-India independence era of 1947. With an even greater number of former British colonies seeking autonomy and a philosophy of decolonization by Great Britain, there became a need to redefine these countries' ties and relationships, both with Great Britain and with each other. So why is the Commonwealth important? Well, for one, it constitutes a massive population and land area. The population of the Commonwealth is 1.8 billion inhabitants, or 30% of the world's population. As you can see, what goes on in the Commonwealth, the policies established, and so on, has an effect on a great number of people and also something that affects the rest of the world, either directly or indirectly. Who runs the Commonwealth? Well, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II is the head and so recognized as the symbol of their free association. Her Majesty attends the Commonwealth summits and Commonwealth games that are both held every four years and also gives an annual radio address on Commonwealth Day, which is the second Monday of March. Her powers are primarily ceremonial and symbolic, but Her Majesty, though neutral, is always concerned with the well-being and success of the Commonwealth nations. The Secretary General acts as the Chief Executive of the Commonwealth. He is elected by the heads of the government from among Commonwealth diplomats and foreign ministers for a maximum of two four-year terms. The present Secretary General, Kamala Sharma, was elected in November of 2007 and assumed office on the 1st of April, 2008. He's an Indian diplomat who had previously served as India's High Commissioner to the United Kingdom. So what does the Commonwealth do and why is it important? Although accused of being little more than a post-colonial club, its main business is promoting democracy, good government, human rights, and economic development. All members commit themselves to the statements of beliefs set out by the heads of government, and although the Commonwealth has little authority over member nations, the Commonwealth draws its main strength from its moral authority. This is the main way in which the Commonwealth promotes economic and social development and the alleviation of poverty, by demanding a high moral code of conduct and equality. On a political level, perhaps the Commonwealth of Nations is of little importance, but on a social and moral level, its importance is monumental because it promotes superior self-government, equality, and especially literacy and health issues. I hope you've learned more about the Commonwealth of Nations and that you'll remember this information whenever you hear the term used. Have a great day.